Hello! Welcome to this video on Descriptive Statistics in RStudio. Here we'll learn about entering simple datasets into RStudio, and also taking those datasets to compute some sums or means and medians, those are indicators of central tendency, as well as some indicators of dispersion, such as the range and the standard deviation. So inside of RStudio, you'll notice that we've maximized the console on the left side, and the environment on the right side, and we'll begin by thinking about a possible data set. We might have a data set on one variable that will be our first variable, and we'll simply call it v1 for our first variable. We want to insert into variable 1 a sequence of numbers as we're creating our data set. And to insert into v1 a sequence of numbers, we'll use the trick that we learned in a previous video where we have the left arrow sign and also a hyphen. This is forming an arrow, and we're going to insert into v1 anything to the right of that arrow. The convention for adding numbers to a variable like we're doing here is to start out by putting in a C and a left parenthesis, and now we can simply type in a list of numbers, each separated by a comma. So here's a very simple list. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That's our simple data set for variable v1. If I hit enter, on the left-hand side here in my console, I go back to the blinking cursor, and on the right-hand side in the environment, I now have v1 equaling the numbers that you see here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I can create a second variable. We'll call this one v2, and we'll make this equal to a computation. So we will insert into v2, again using our left arrow and our hyphen, the following computation. We'll take the initial variable, v1, that we had a moment ago, and we'll add to each element in variable 1 a total of, we'll say, 9. I picked that somewhat arbitrarily, but you'll notice that if I hit enter, now we create a second variable, it's called v2, and we've added 9 to each element in v1. Okay, so now we have entered a couple of data sets, and that's a starting point. Now that we have data sets, we can perform some operations on those data sets. One common operation in statistics is to take the sum of a particular data set, and that couldn't be easier inside of R. We simply type in the word sum, that's a command that the R system recognizes, and we can put in the variable for which we want the sum. So, for example, sum, and then left parenthesis, v1, that has one element in it as an answer, and that element happens to sum to 15. We can take other kinds of indicators as well for central tendency. We can take the mean of vector v1, or variable v1, and that will have a mean of 3, and by contrast, had we taken the mean of variable 2, that would have summed instead to 12, or that would have averaged out to 12, rather. Okay, and then we can do the same for uh, median, another indicator of central tendency, and we can look for the median of, say, v1, and that turned out to be 3. We can look for the median of v2, and that turned out to be 12. Okay, so these are some indicators of central tendency. We can contrast those with indicators of dispersion, and some common indicators of dispersion include the range. So we might say range, open a left paren, and we insert v1, and it turns out that the minimum and maximum scores there are respectively 1 and 5. If we wanted those individually, we could type in min for the minimum of v1. We'll get the smallest score in the list. We can get the maximum score in the list also by typing in max v1. Okay? And we can also get the, um, the range for something like v3, just so you can get some diversity there. Okay? Oops. Range v2, I should have said. And that's turning out to be 10 through 14. After having several commands there, you might click on Control L, and that will clear your console while retaining all the values over on this side. So we'll now go ahead and just look at a couple of indicators of uh, dispersion that are characterizing these two data sets. Specifically, we'll get the standard deviation, which is signified by SD. We'll get the standard deviation from V1. That turned out to be 1.58 and some change. And we'll get also the standard deviation for V2, which turned out, excuse me, V2 should be capitalized. Okay, turned out also to be 1.58 because all we had done was add 4 to each element in V1 to derive V2. So we've learned about some indicators of dispersion, some indicators of central tendency. Thanks for watching.